Let me tell you a little secret. I play a lot of VR games. Well, that's not the secret, that is probably not a surprise to anyone. The secret is, I think that VR games nowadays only use a fraction of the potential the medium has. That is why I play a lot of VR ports and mods of that game. And seeing how fast the Plato VR modding community has grown lately and how much the quality of these conversions has increased, I guess I'm not alone with that notion. A major problem that Plato VR conversions struggle with is performance. These games are obviously not optimized for VR and usually are very taxing on the GPU. I am here today to tell you that there's a tool that will increase the performance of not only VR ports but of nearly every VR game on PC and that this tool is free and very easy to use. It has become invaluable for myself. What is the sorcery you ask? Good question. Let's get into it. First we will quickly go over how to install and use it. For all of you who just want a quick and dirty solution and want it now. You can follow that and then peace out, it will be good enough for most users. After that we will be talking about what the tool actually does and how to configure it to your specific needs. It's not sorcery after all and an increase in performance will always come with a cost. The goal for most users will be to increase performance with very little or at best no noticeable decrease in visual fidelity. But depending on your rig you might be fine with lower visuals to get the dancing playable at all. We start by going to the github page of the project. There's a link in the description below. If this seems intimidating, don't worry, you can ignore basically everything on this page. Just click on the link on the right side of the screen under releases. As the making of this video, the latest version is 0.9.82. If you see a newer version, that's fine, use the newest version. Under assets, click on download and install the first entry. It's safe. Trust me, I'm a random person on the internet telling you that it's safe. What can go wrong? Before we continue, let's do a quick round of credits. The tool you just downloaded was created by Tuppy287. It is mainly for convenience and allows you to very easily install and remove three different VR performance mods to most of your VR games. The performance mods themselves were made by a different guy, F. Holger, who also happens to be lead developer on the excellent Half-Life 2 VR mod. Opening up the app, you will be presented with this screen, which shows all of your Steam games that you have currently installed, everything VR or not. If you have a Meta headset and you don't use Steam VR, don't worry, the tool also has a solution for you. Just follow the video, everything I will show you is valid for you too. If you want to add a non-Steam game, click this plus button, insert a name and a path to the game's install directory. Unfortunately, there is no way to browse here. I will do this really quick because I have Subnautica on the Epic Game Store. Yes, I know, I know. They gave it away for free once, don't judge me, okay? You will be able to use the performance mods on any game that uses OpenVR or the Oculus VR runtime. You can filter the OpenVR games with this button here. OpenVR is an API by Valve that offers developers a single interface to communicate with any VR headset without having to know which headset the user is actually wearing. That makes it way easier to make the game compatible with all the different VR hardware. So most VR games on Steam use OpenVR, but not all of them. As you can see, Subnautica, though not on Steam, still uses OpenVR and we will use it as an example for now. To install the performance mod, simply click on the game and then on FSR install plugin. If you want to remove it again, click on the same button again. And that's it. Done. We will have a short look at the two other performance mods a bit later in the video. There are a couple of settings you can tweak. We'll go over each of them to see what they do and what their impact on visuals and performances. But first I want to show you what the whole thing does just with the default settings. So I made sure to remove the plugin, started up Subnautica, loaded a save, dove into a kelp forest as I recall performance was struggling the most there and dropped another save. I put the graphics settings to max and recorded my FPS values which were averaging about 59. I then exited the game, installed the plugin, made sure all settings were on default and restarted the game. Et voila, it increased my frame rate to about 79 without an obvious impact on visual fidelity. To show you that the whole thing will have an impact on the visual that is also visible after capturing and YouTube compression and all that, I quit the game again and turned the main control for this mod down to 50%. We'll go over in more detail what this actually does shortly. Went back into the game and oh boy. Now we are at over 110 frames per second but it looks terrible. To get the FPS values I turned off reprojection. Reprojection is a technique that makes sure your headset is still responsive even when your GPU can't keep up with the headset's target refresh rate. I run my index at 144Hz meaning I would need 144 frames per second to keep up. When performance drops below that the missing frames will be interpolated using previously rendered frames and the headset's motion sensors. While reprojection works fantastic and you should most definitely not turn 
component off or you will have a bad experience, it messes with your frame rate and makes it harder to accurately measure performance. If it seems like you are locked at half or a third of your headset's refresh rate, that's reprojection kicking in. So instead of messing around with GPU frame times or reprojection ratios, I just turned it off completely to get good old FPS values that everybody is familiar with. So what does the whole thing actually do? Where does your performance boost come from? Let's talk about upscaling real quick. Upscaling is a method that lets you render your game in a lower resolution and then scale the rendered frames up to the target resolution. The upscaled image will of course not look as good as if the image were rendered in the higher resolution to begin with. But if the difference in image quality is low compared to the performance boost, it might still be a worthwhile trade-off. It often is. So nowadays most widely known system is NVIDIA's DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling. It is an AI powered upscaling method that uses dedicated hardware that is available on NVIDIA's RTX series GPUs. In response AMD released their own upscaler called AMD FSR or Fidelity Super Resolution. FSR can be used with any graphics card and is open source and free to use. Nvidia then in turn released their own open source upscaling mechanism called NIS, Nvidia Image Scaling, that also can be used with any GPU. All these things do the same. The game gets rendered in a lower resolution and then scaled up to the target resolution. They just use different methods to do the upscaling. While DLSS uses AI and dedicated hardware, FSR and NAS use some kind of sharpening algorithm. The performance increase is similar for each of them, but DLSS will generally result in the highest visual quality, with the disadvantage of not being free and being restricted to certain GPUs. So what our little tool now actually does is to inject AMD's FSR or Nvidia's NIS, you can choose the one you prefer, into any game that uses OpenVR or the Oculus VR runtime. So this only makes sense if the game does not have the option itself. Into the Radius for example has an upscaling option, you can choose between DLSS and FSR and if the game has that you should rather use the in-game option that will probably give better results. But if the game does not have an upscaling option or if it does only have DLSS and you don't have a compatible GPU, then we are in business. Before we get to customizing our experience, there are two important notes. Firstly, DLSS acts as an anti-aliasing, so it reduces jagged edges. FSR and NIS don't. It is thus highly recommended to use the best anti-aliasing setting in-game when you use this mod. Secondly, using these upscaling methods will increase your CPU load. It basically takes load from your GPU and shifts it towards the CPU. With VR games, you will probably be limited by GPU most of the time, that's why it works. If you are restricted by your CPU though, you will probably not see any performance boost. We will now go over all the settings, there are not that many really. Let's start with enabled, pretty easy, turn upscaling on or off. Next option, use Nvidia's image scaling. As I said just a second ago, you can choose if you want AMD's FSR or NIS, this is a toggle to do so. They are both very similar and I personally don't see any difference, neither in performance nor in visual clarity, but you can test them both and see if there is one you prefer. If not, you can just leave it on default, which would be off. Now we get to the interesting part, the render scale. If you have used an upscaling method before, you know that they usually come with different options like performance, balance and quality mode. The render scale is exactly that setting, but here you can fine tune it to a higher degree. This value is actually the percentage of your target resolution that the game will be rendered in. Let's say your target resolution is 2000 x 2000 pixel per eye. Then a render scale of 50% would cause the game to render at 1000 x 1000 pixel per eye and then scale the images up to the target. The tooltip shows AMD's presets for the quality settings. The default is ultra quality mode at 77%. You can go over 100% which will cause the image to render at the native resolution and then get upscaled to a higher resolution. Not sure why you would want to do that though. I again used Subnautica to show how image quality and performance looks like at AMD's preset values. Without upscaling the game runs at about 59 frames per second. Ultra quality mode puts it up to 79 fps, quality mode to 92, balance to 103. Performance mode is about 114 frames per second. As you can see the visual quality drops off pretty quick. We might be able to mitigate that a bit with a sharpness setting. We get to that in a minute. I usually only use ultra quality mode, it already offers a pretty substantial increase and performance with a loss in visual quality that is barely noticeable. If you still feel that the game looks worse even at ultra quality, you can try to go higher than 77%. Or have a look at the next setting, the radius. Per default this mod will only apply the FSR or NIS upscaling to a given radius around the center of the screen. Everything outside will be upscaled with a cheaper method. That will result in a lower image quality at the edges of the screen, but it will increase performance a bit. And when I say a bit, I really mean a tiny little bit. You can turn on debug mode to see an outline of the radius in your headset. Let's test it, shall we? The lowest possible setting for this is 0.2. With this we get about 81 frames per second. 
with a default setting of 0.5 we go back up to 79 when we push the radius up to 1.0 which should cover your whole view area frames drop down to 77 the rendered images in vr are always a bit bigger than what you actually see in the headset and this setting should cover the whole visible area if you want to turn it off completely so that everything is upscaled using fsr slash nis you can set the radius to 2. there was no noticeable performance difference between 1 and 2. this whole option really does not do that much the loss in image quality is very small and so is the performance boost. I usually leave it at the default value. If you feel that the quality falls off towards the edges of the screen then you can safely turn it off. I would put it to 2 to turn it off completely in that case. Finally we have sharpness. With this slider you can customize how aggressive the sharpening is. You can put it in a range from 10% to 300% with 90 being the default value. This does not have any impact on performance whatsoever but it will change the look of your upscaled images. You might want to up that value if you use a lower render scale but don't over sharpen that can reduce image quality. The final option is apply MIP bias. This will increase image quality and should only be turned off if you have problems with missing textures or unusual patterns in your textures. This never happened to me so I don't have an example to show. That all the settings. Below you can customize some hotkeys to change some of the settings on the fly. You might want to look at these when you play around with customizing for the first time to get an immediate look at the visual differences. Once you are done with that you will probably never use them again. I've tried and used this with a lot of different games and it works for most of them. Not for all though, there's no guarantee, you will just have to try yourself. When it does not work, sometimes the games will not load at all as is the case for Half-Life Alex. sometimes it does unpredictable things. Green Hell VR for example, it seemingly just lowers the resolution without scaling it up again, that's pretty useless, but these are rare exceptions. Before we wrap it up, let's go over the other two toolkits very quick. The foveated plugin will inject fixed foveated rendering into your OpenVR game. You might have heard about foveated rendering with reference to the PSVR 2, that headset uses eye tracking to only render the part of the screen that you are actively looking at in full resolution, thus increasing performance. Fixed foveated rendering is a simpler version without eye tracking, it will simply render the center of your screen in full resolution and use a lower resolution to the sides. Let's have a quick look with default settings. We managed to increase our frame rate to about 69 but with the image quality decreasing significantly towards the side of the screen. I would not use this. The performance increase is not very substantial and the reduction in image quality is far worse than for the upscaling methods. Still it's part of the toolkit so I wanted to at least show you. There are a few settings to play around with. The main switch turn fixed foveated rendering on or off. The preferred setting for use variable ray shading is on but currently only works with Nvidia's RTX and GTX 16 series cards. Turn it off if you don't have one of those. Then there are three radii to mess around with. In the inner circle the game will be rendered in full resolution. Between inner and mid radius the game will be rendered in half resolution. Between mid and outer at 1 4th resolution and outside of that at 1 16th. As with the radius for the upscaling method one should encompass your whole screen. Additionally, you can apply a sharpening filter which might increase image quality a bit. Finally, the VR performance kit is just a combination of the two previous ones. You can as well use this one instead of the others. One important difference though, this one will not only work with OpenVR but also with the Oculus VR runtime. So if you are using a Meta headset and use the Meta launcher and not SteamVR to run your games, you will have to use this one. Manually add a game as I have done with Subnautica and that's all you have to do. The settings are the same with one little difference. Here you can also select AMD's contrast adaptive sharpening as an upscaling method but FSR is based on that and results in better image quality so there's no point, don't use it. With this toolkit you can actually combine upscaling and fixed foveated rendering but I would not recommend to do that unless you are really desperate. That's it, that's all there is to say. I hope I was able to give you a basic understanding on how this set of performance tools work so that you can get the most out of it yourself. Try it out, it's a game changer for me personally and I bet it will be for you too. If you have questions about this feel free to ask them in the comments below or if I got anything wrong also please tell me in the comments. If you found this video helpful consider subscribing to the channel, we do everything VR related and would be happy to welcome you in our small but growing community. See you in the next one.